Hey guys, welcome back to another What's For Dinner video. I have five recipes for you all in this one. They were all easy. My kids enjoyed them. My husband went back for seconds or thirds on some of these. They were all absolutely delicious and definitely approved by my family. So I am sharing them with you guys. All of the recipes will be in the description box down below. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the first recipe. Tonight's dinner is a knockoff of a Cracker Barrel chicken broccoli casserole dish. I'm gonna change it up a little bit from what even I saw the recipe online just to make it fit our family. So I've got chicken breast, you can use any kind of chicken you really want, can of broccoli cheese soup, cheese, it says four ounces, that's definitely not enough, so I'm stepping up that, a whole thing of Ritz crackers, a cup of milk, and then it wanted eight ounces of broccoli, and again, I'm not doing that, so this is a big bag, because I'm gonna put it in it and then serve some extra on the side. Step one, 350 on your oven. And then the next thing to go ahead and work on is dice up your chicken into just like some bite-sized cubes. This is what I mean by little bite-sized cubes. The easiest way I get that is I just take the full chicken breast and I slice it in half down the middle, and then I will take each one of these and slice it and cube it. But that's just the easiest way I've found to get little bite-sized chunks that are all around the same size. You don't have to dice up your chicken. You can put them in the pan, just whole breast. That's up to you, but I think dicing it's easier. But you're gonna do some salt and pepper to taste. And then paprika, about a half a teaspoon, more or less, according to your family. This is a 13 by nine. Go ahead and spray it so nothing sticks. And then just put your chicken down there. And work it into an even layer. I'm just gonna rinse this bowl and I'm gonna use this to mix the soup and the milk and some of the cheese. One cup of milk. It said four ounces of cheese, I'm going, uh, We'll start with four and see how I feel. And then the entire can of broccoli cheddar soup. Okay, make sure to get it all out of there. You don't wanna waste any of that. Mix this up really good and then we'll move on. Pour half of this mixture over the chicken. Okay, make sure you completely cover it. Using the Ninja to try and get the broccoli chopped up really small. Tonight's dinner features broccoli powder, but yeah, don't make yours that small. Just chop yours up into really small pieces, but don't do this. But then top this with your broccoli, which hopefully is a lot bigger pieces than this. And then over our broccoli rice, broccoli powder, whatever you wanna call it, you're gonna pour the rest of this. Spread it out to cover the broccoli. It would be a lot easier if this was just chunks. <laughs> There's only like two ounces of this cheese left in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the top too. And then crush the entire package of the Ritz and pour that all over the top. Yeah, and just sprinkle them all over the top. Now this will go in a 350 degree oven. If there were full chicken breast laying under there, I would go about 45 minutes or more, but because I dice up the chicken, I'm gonna check this at 30, but I'll let you know how long this actually takes once it's fully done. But the chicken, if you insert a thermometer down there into the bottom, should come out about 165, 170. 30 minutes wasn't enough, so I'm gonna stick to the original 45, but you'll see it bubbling in the corners. So that's an easier way to know that it's done as well. But like I said, extra broccoli. We made rice. My rice cooker is probably on its way out the door because that was a whole huge mess. And then just serve this over the rice and you've got dinner. Plate it up. It's just over the rice. The rice we butter, salt, pepper, all of that. And the extra broccoli. But like I said, an easy one. And it's kind of like the copycat of Cracker Barrel, but I changed it up just a little bit. Tonight's dinner is a chicken air fryer hibachi type thing. I saw it on TikTok. We did it, I think last month. It was really good, so I'm gonna try it again. First things first is your chicken. I'm using tenders like always. You can use breast, thighs, whatever you want. Cut this up into bite-sized pieces. Two zucchinis, peel them, don't, your choice. Wash them first, obviously. Carrots, I prefer the normal carrots, but I'm gonna make this work because that's what Walmart substituted. An onion, you can use white, yellow, you can use a red onion, whatever your choice is, but that's up to you. Garlic powder, or you can use fresh garlic. It can burn in the air fryer, that's why I'm just sticking with the powder. And ginger, if you like it, if you don't, skip it. Salt and pepper, obviously. Olive oil, soy sauce, rice wine vinegar, and sesame oil. You can skip this because you only have to use just a dot of it. So you don't have to worry about that. If you don't have it, just push it away. But the rest of this, you do need. This way you guys can see which way I cut everything. The tenders, I just cut them up into little chunks like this. 
The carrots, I did long ways and then quartered them because they take the longest to cook, so you're gonna want them pretty thin. The onion, as you can tell, just across, and then things like that to make little cubes. And then the same thing with the zucchini. They're pretty small, just little pieces, and I still have another one and a half to go, but this way you guys see how I cut everything. If your air fryer has to preheat like mine does, it says 380 in the recipe, so I'm gonna go 375, and it's 10 minutes on one side, 10 on the other, so I'm gonna leave it on 20 and preheat. The recipe was never clear, so I just kind of eyeball everything, but you're gonna want about a tablespoon or two of the olive oil, about a quarter cup of the soy, about two teaspoons of the rice wine vinegar. I'm just gonna, yay, like that. And then the sesame oil, about a tea, about two teaspoons to a tablespoon of that. Garlic powder and the ginger, salt and pepper to taste however your family will eat it. Spray your air fryer, whatever cooking spray you use. Take the bowl of everything and put it in. Work it down into an even layer. Oop, there went an onion. Spray a little more on top and let it go. At the 10 minute mark, open it and mix it around, flip it over really good. See what you're going for in here is you gotta break it up because when you cook the chicken, it will like try and stick together in here and then you're gonna have raw pieces in the middle. Like you can see that one's raw because it was stuck to the other one. So get them broken apart really good and then back down for the next 10 minutes. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, that's definitely done. All air fryers are different, so adjust the time for yours, and if it's not brown enough on top for you, you can always go another two minutes on 400, and you'll get nice and golden brown on the top. Pour it out onto the tray. There it is, all done. This is delicious as is. You could serve it over rice, noodles, whatever. This stuff right here is amazing on it. Definitely don't skip on that. If you like hibachi places and their white sauce, that stuff's so good, extra soy if you want, but dinner is done. Next dinner, my house was pure chaos, so you're getting a voiceover for this part. It is chicken fajitas on a sheet pan, so you're gonna need chicken, oil, onions, cilantro, tortilla shells, peppers of any kind and color that you want, some fajita seasoning, and some limes, and then you could serve this with rice or anything you want to, or just go on its own. Preheat your oven to 425 degrees. And then I get asked a lot how I cut my peppers. It's very easy, top and bottom come off, and then you just slide your knife in a circle around it. It will cut all the seeds out beautifully, and it cuts into perfect strips that way. Very, very simple and easy trick. And then when it comes to the onion, you'll see me do in a second, if you cut it in half, and then do little slices straight down it, it will fall apart into the perfect little slices for fajitas every single time so you don't have to worry about any kind of special technique here just slice it like that and it falls perfectly apart i'm using chicken tenders you don't have to but when i use chicken tenders i make sure to cut that tendon out of there i've showed you how to do it in another video but right here you could just see it's a fork and a napkin and you hold it and just push down with the fork and it'll slide right out and then cut it into really thin strips and throw that in the bowl too once you have everything in the bowl drizzle it with about a tablespoon of olive oil you don't have to go too crazy with that the entire packet of fajita seasoning will then go in and mix this whole thing really well. Pour it onto your sheet pan. I like to use foil lined and I will grease it just to make cleanup easy and to make sure nothing sticks to this thing. But you wanna get it into as much of an even layer as you can for faster cooking and so nothing is raw and something else is overdone. Put this in your oven for 30 minutes and then with about five minutes left, take some of your tortilla shells, wrap them in foil and throw them in there too so that way they get nice and warmed all the way through. It's a perfect trick. Take all this out of the oven, and then what you're gonna do is take a lime. You could do half if you really wanted to cut it, but do an entire lime and juice it over the entire thing. And it's gonna be hard for you to see because I didn't have the camera in the right angle, but I also sliced up some fresh cilantro leaves, and you'll see me here sprinkling that over the top I didn't really get close enough for you to see, but that is fresh cilantro that I'm sprinkling. And here are the sheet pan fajitas. They are delicious. We do this all the time, all year round, but it is perfect for summer. It is a fast, easy dinner. All of my kids will eat it except for one, but that one will just pick the chicken out and eat the tortilla shells with the cheese. So either way, they're still eating it. But it is so good, so easy, and very budget friendly too. And just a perfect weeknight fast dinner. 
Tonight's dinner recipe is called a Sicilian meatloaf. I found this one off Pinterest. It's very similar to an Italian meatloaf that my mom used to make when I was little, but a few extra ingredients. But I'm just gonna run with it and see how it goes. Two pounds of beef, olive oil, Italian breadcrumbs, some tomato paste, garlic, a red bell pepper, an onion. It also said you could do a red onion, but I prefer not to actually bake with that. Any kind of marinara sauce you like. Fresh basil leaves, I won't do that because if my kids see the green, they won't eat it, so I'm gonna use some dried basil. Salt and pepper, two egg, mozzarella cheese, and Parmesan cheese, and then some sliced up ham. Step number one, 350. Next step, dice these both really, really small. I wanted mine like super, super diced, so we brought out this little chopper thing, but just go whatever size you want because this is gonna be inside the meatloaf, and if I don't make it really small, my kids are gonna see it and they're gonna go, ew. Take a normal size pan, tablespoon of olive oil, heat it up to medium high heat. So you guys can see how little the pieces are of mine, but once the olive oil is heated up, put these in the pan and cook all of this for about five minutes until the onions are translucent. Once your onions are translucent like that, it says two cloves of garlic. I'm going closer to like three on this, but put that in there, cook it just until it's fragrant, then take that off the heat. You want this mixture to cool down before you put it into the meat mixture. It doesn't have to cool down completely, but it definitely needs to cool down some. So I put it in a very thin layer on a plate. That way this can cool off while I'm putting everything else in a bowl together. Get a large bowl, throw two pounds of beef in there, pre-beat two eggs and put that in. Into the bowl, three quarters of a cup of Italian breadcrumbs. You can really use whatever breadcrumbs you want, but this is what it said, so this is what I'm going with. Half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. I'm not measuring that, I'm just gonna, kinda like that. Tomato paste, two tablespoons. I'm just gonna use this because it's easier to get it off of it. And just kinda eyeball it for two tablespoons. Probably a little more than two. One teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, or just do the amount that you think that you would like for your house if these measurements don't sound good for you. And then I didn't pay attention that it wanted some fresh parsley. I don't have that and I missed that completely. So I'm just gonna use some dried parsley at this point. Probably about a tablespoon of the dried and just throw that in. But you can skip that. And we gotta put this back in now. Just feel it, make sure it's cool to the touch before you put it in there because otherwise it'll start to cook your eggs if you're not careful but mine feels good, so we'll just put all that back in. Best thing to mix meatloaf with is your hands, so time to get dirty. One thing with mixing it, you wanna mix everything together, but you don't wanna overmix it because that's when you get a very dry, tough meatloaf, so just mix it enough to incorporate everything. Take some parchment paper and lay it on your counter. Probably about like that big. Place your meat mixture in the middle of it. And what it says is to pat this out into about an eight by 15 size rectangle. What the directions say is we're gonna layer ham, then the leaves of the basil, or you can do leaves of spinach, and then mozzarella cheese over the top, but leave a one inch border all the way around because we're going to roll this up. So you wanna start with the ham. Instead of the basil leaves, like I said, I'm just gonna sprinkle the whole thing with some basil. I just trying to go like this and go like yeah, too wide? Yeah, just kind of like, yeah, like too wide should be fine. And then I'm gonna put the basil on top of the ham so it will stick like that. Then shredded mozzarella cheese, we're gonna put all over the ham and the basil. Not too crazy, probably about, this is a two cup bag, so probably about one cup. My husband said the cheese was too light, so whole bag of cheese in there. I like cheese. Then you're just gonna start at one end, it doesn't really matter. And you're gonna let the parchment paper help you. It's gonna be noisy, I apologize. But you're gonna start rolling it up. Oh, that's smart. And like I said, let the parchment paper help you. All the way over and then try and seal anything that broke open. Seal around the edges so nothing pops out of there. And down here, pinch where it meets. All the way around, just look for anything that could pop open while it's baking. 13 by nine. Carefully pick this sucker up and place it in there. 
Take your marinara sauce, whichever kind you're using. I love the Classico brand. Their stuff is delicious. Rayo is good. Any of them really, it does not matter. Just use what you like and you're gonna put it over the top. Not too heavy because you're gonna add more at the end. This is just to kind of give it a glaze over the top and also help it not to burn too bad. But just work it all the way around the meatloaf. 350 recipe says for an hour at the hour. I will check this with a thermometer, but it does say 350 for one hour. There it is, fresh out of the oven. Mine took an extra 15 minutes, so if I did this again, I wouldn't do 350, I would do 400, and the hour would definitely be enough. And I'm also gonna serve it with some pasta on the side because it's an Italian meatloaf and I wasn't really sure what to serve it with, and it said zoodles, my kids aren't eating that. But transfer this to a cutting board, let it sit for about 10 minutes, because then everything inside won't just run right out, but let it sit for about 10 minutes before you cut it. All right, this way you can actually see the roll pattern in there. And it would be more distinctive if you put the whole basil leaves or the spinach leaves, but we didn't do that. So you can kind of see it right there. Just serving it over the pasta, like I said, I probably would have had a little more pasta sauce to put over the top, but I mixed it all into the pasta, but I'm gonna eat it almost like a meatball anyways. But that way you can see the spiral really good in there. And that wasn't too much work whatsoever. It just takes a little while in the oven. That's what makes this one difficult is the length of time. Tonight's recipe is another one I found on Pinterest, but I am changing a few things in it because it just fits my family easier. And that's the one I'm gonna share with you. And it's kind of like a Mexican cornbread casserole. So you're gonna need some Mexican blend cheese or you could just use cheddar, that's up to you. Some ground beef, any kind. This is just what I get from Sam, so it is the 93.7, but whatever one you have, 80-20 doesn't matter. Some salsa, a can of corn, and a can of cream corn. Taco seasoning, regular, mild, who cares? That's up to you. Two boxes of the Jiffy cornbread mix, and you're going to need the egg and the milk that it calls for, so just keep that in mind. Salt and pepper, and onion powder. First things first, oven to 400. Get out a pan and crank this thing up to about medium high. Add your meat to your pan and cook it all the way through. If you have a lot of excess grease, now is the time when you would get that out of there. You could just run a paper towel through the pan, but mine doesn't really have it. But I'll push all my meat to one side and then lean the pan down here. And then I will just take the paper towel and let it soak up the grease right there with my spatula and then bring it out of the pan. And it works really, really well. Into the meat, a can of the corn drained, a can of the cream corn. The original recipe called for Rotel. We do not like Rotel in our family, so I have a jar of salsa. I'm gonna do half, see how it looks, and then add the other half if necessary. I'm just gonna finish out the jar just to give it a little more. All right, the original recipe says a tablespoon of onion powder. I think that's kind of heavy, so I'm gonna kind of do like, kind of like, a tablespoon and a half. Oh, there's my oven. Maybe two table, maybe two teaspoons, but I'm not doing too crazy. That's nuts, a full tablespoon of that. But you do you, and the packet of taco seasoning. Salt and pepper to taste at this point. Mix it all together real good, and then let this cook for all of maybe five minutes, just to let it thicken a little and just meld together all those flavors. Turn off the heat and add about a cup and a half to two cups of the Mexican cheese. Mix it in until it melts and then take this completely off the heat. In a bowl, two boxes of the Jiffy. For the directions, it's a third of a cup of milk and one egg, so you're gonna need two thirds of a cup of milk and two eggs. Mix this all together really, really well. Get a greased 13 by nine. Pour your mixture into it. Try not to make a gigantic mess. Spread it out into an even layer. Evenly pour your cornbread mixture over the top. So I kind of do little back and forth motions like that. So that way nothing kind of bubbles out the sides. If you just kind of like plop it on there, you're gonna get spots where the mixture is gonna come up over it. Spread it out, go edge to edge. You wanna completely cover all of the meat mixture with the cornbread. Pop this in a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. 
at the 20 minute mark, take it out. Take some more of your cheese and cover the top. You could put as much or as little cheese as you want. Just do whatever makes you, your family happy. We like cheese in this family, so I'm going a little heavy. You don't have to do that. Back into the oven for another four to five minutes just to melt all of that cheese. Fresh out of the oven. Let this sit for a few minutes because otherwise if you dig in right now, everything's just gonna go and just be a nasty mess. So let it sit for a good five or six minutes before you dig in. While we're waiting to dig into that, a couple things. In the comments section, someone said they mentioned adding a can of black beans. That would also be really good if you wanted to bulk up some of the protein or anything like that. And then as far as toppings go, you can eat it just like this and it will still be good. Or you could put anything on it that you would typically put on any kind of Mexican dish, fresh cilantro, sour cream, hot sauce, lime, whatever you wanna do, you can top it or leave it just like it is. Here's what it looks like on a plate. I top mine with just some sour cream and some fresh cilantro, just to see how that goes. But it still makes kind of a mess. But otherwise, it looks good, smells good, so I'm pretty excited about this one. Here is an overview of the five recipes again. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Got some good dinner ideas to try for your family. A good amount of these would be absolutely perfect with back to school coming because they're very fast, easy, and the kids will enjoy them. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to thumbs up so I know to make more like this one. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.